famous conference, uh, 2014, in Singapore, where about 800 people came there together. Uh, the person who was opening this uh, conference, organizer Nicolas Jordi, started that conference with a sentence, the time of metamaterials is over. Everybody was shocked why we came to Singapore, I mean, to hear the time is over. And then he said, it's a time of tunable metamaterials. Materials that you cannot build once, but you can tune and change in real time. And my answer to that was that uh, electrochemistry can provide you quite a lot of that. And we started in w on one front. It was actually before that, because there I already was, was giving a keynote lecture about what we had at that time. <coughs> we started first with liquid-liquid interfaces. Oil and water don't mix, but if you drop nanoparticle there, these nanoparticles will settle at the interface to block the interface between oil and water, because oil and water hate each other, right? The role of nanoparticle will be uh, the same as peacekeeping troops between two ethnic groups which are fighting with each other. And if those uh, ethnic groups hate each other more than the peacekeepers, right, then it will be a stable position for peacekeepers. If they start to hate peacekeepers more than each other, of course, there is a problem. The particle will be gone. Anyway, that we, we have the same situation. We have particles then settling on the surface by themselves. But the particles, when we speak about metallic nanoparticles, we need to protect them against fusion in the bulk. They fuse due to the so-called Van der Waals forces. And if you just let them do it, you will have a big blob there of metal and will fall down and will be, you cannot use it. So what you do, you cover them by special uh, molecules, they're called ligands, which will have terminal groups, which will dissociate and will be charged. So th uh, such kind of nanoparticle will, may have 900 charges, elementary charges. So these particles are, f they, people call them functionalized, not to come close to each other. Now, but they come to the surface, and if they hate each other, what's going to happen? They will start try to be away from each other. But then, but still they want to come. So the same analogy, for instance, like in this country, imagine the queen should travel in some cortege and then the people stand there and want to see the queen, right? And of course, at the beginning, they, they don't come close to each other because they don't like it, but in the end, they will be densely packed. How you can regulate the interaction? Very simply, you can, first of all, change the charge on them, so will repel. You can go to that charge, they still don't fuse in the bulk, but n the minimum is possible. Also, you can change electrolyte concentration, which screens all electrostatic interaction there, and because of that, they will not, uh, uh, they, they will be able to come closer to each other. And you can do that. And the first thing that we've done, it was uh, to show that you can get a giant Raman effect uh, in such system, and the beauty of that system that the molecules can come from oil side, from the side of the uh, of water side, a different kind of molecules, and we could see huge enhancement. We could detect, let us say, one one molecule per five nanoparticles with such proportion. And that was our first paper on the subject in Nature Materials about it. And uh, that kind of was very interesting for different kind of analysis in the first place of uh, wrong substances in their presence, which are yet not damaging and dangerous for people. But you can get a signature of them. But then my dream was uh, to have an electrochemical system. And that work was done, what I mentioned with Searson, like that, that was a, a, a wonderful cooperation between uh, me on theoretical part and Joshua Edel, uh, it's a champion of uh, microfluidics and analytical science in our department, and we worked together on that, and we uh, made that system working. And then the idea was, okay, and if we apply uh, electric field or apply voltage, put this system between the two electrodes, you have the liquid-liquid interface and two electrodes here. One is positive, another negative. This will be water, this will be oil. So particles live in water, they like water, they don't live in oil, but they come to the surface to block the interface. 
And what you can do when you apply, for instance, make that electrode more negative, so it will push negatively charged particles to occupy this surface densely, more densely. And uh, if you charge your electrode positively, they will all leave the surface. So what's the fun here? Why? Why it's interesting? First of all, we had a very simple theory, uh, which actually working very well, that if you have an array of nanoparticles there, and if it's dense enough, it will reflect light. It will reflect light much more than, uh, for instance, the same amount of metal if it were continuous sheet. If you take them and build a continuous sheet of them, it will not be, it will be still transparent. But due to interesting, this resonance effect there, they reflect light. And you can see the system as a mirror. And we had the theory which was describing the spectra of that reflection uh, depending on the distance between particles, depending on the, essentially, yeah, the, the, the density of that array. And uh, that was uh, finally realized in our a new paper in Nature Materials about it, where we could see that you can really, when you can convert the mirror into window by half a volt applied voltage. There was a big team, there are many authors there, that was cooperation with another professor, our cha electrochemistry champion, uh, Anthony Kuthernak, and uh, three of us were leading that project, and there were young, enthusiastic people, like uh, my postdoc, Devabrata uh, Sigdar, he is now in India, but will join us again, and um, uh, Union Montelonga, who is back to Mexico, absolutely international team, like that one. So we have shown that that mirror works. You can have. The problem with that thing was that mirror is very slow. Why? Because when the particles are let go into the big bulk, they need to return. And how they return? If you have a lot of them, high concentration, of course there will be no, not a long path for them to come to cover the surface, but then your solution will be colored which is not good. You want to have a transparent window relative to the mirror. And what is happening in that case, you, uh, what we have investigated, what is the speed for them to come? And the time to reach that is inversely proportional to the square of the concentration of nanoparticles in the bulk. So we know how to make that kind of time fast. In our Nature Materials paper, in attachment, we have a movie when you can see, for instance, uh, you can see a reflection of a coin, of a one pound coin, which is when you change voltage, becomes a transparent and you see 10 pound node underneath. And it's converted from one state to the other state. Very beautiful, became very popular, discussed everywhere. But the problem that is a very slow process. It was not shown in real time. And in order to do it fast, we need to do it with very thin layer. What so far has been achieved was in a microscopic electrochemical cell, and now we work on nano or micro microscopic electrochemical cell, very thin, so that concentration will be increased not because there will be many particles, but the, the path for the light will be small. And that will allow to reach, according to our estimates, uh, to about a millisecond switch from mirror and window. The other thing, you go from liquid-liquid, which may be uh, very interesting for CERS because you capture different analytes and so on. But for practical application, if you want to have a mirror window in a skyscraper, and the whole idea, how you can sell that idea, that if you have such uh, kind of thing, then you can save a lot of energy in the countries with hot climate. You leave the office, switch, one volt, it changes, becomes a mirror, and you save a lot of energy, right, on air conditioning. You know, in the United States, uh, they spend more time, for instance, on air conditioning in summer than on uh, heating in winter overall the country, as far as I heard about. But it's definitely the case in, in real countries with uh, really very, very hot climate. So uh, the kind of thing vertical liquid-liquid interface, the first blog on that paper was, but they will not be able to make a vertical interface. In principle, you can. You have to functionalize one glass, the other glass, 
that will look like water, that one, you have to equilibrate the ways. Of, because what may happen, you create such system and then it will segregate and the interface will be like that. What is going to happen? The people who bought your windows will come and kill you, right? Anyway, we work on a solid, transparent electrodes at the moment. As described, we develop theory for that as well and also in nanoscopic, microscopic dimension of a cell, which will allow to gather those particles and put them away on a transparent, uh, solid electrode. And then there is no issue that of any segregation, it could be vertical, it could be horizontal, it could be anything. So that is one kind of example of electrochemically controlled optical metamaterials. But that is a proof of the principle and the case also to interest a lot of people who are working with different metamaterials, with different functionalities, not only plasmonic functionalities. If we can use electrochemistry to modify these materials. Uh, we can talk also about uh, other non-optical metamaterials, uh, what I call electromechanical metamaterials. And there are many examples of them and we are also working on them here. Uh, for one of those uh, uh, systems is, for instance, uh, the key element for micro-robotics. This is uh, a sheet, like a capacitor, with bendable plates. And then when you can polarize those plates, and if in between those plates you have a polymer, and in this polymer you have one sort of ions that can move, so for instance positive, you polarize this negatively, it's positively, and your ions will go to one side. They will ex exert kind of tension here. So the system tries to expand here and shrink here. So you will bend. You change polarity, you will bend that way. So you will have a hand which is going that way and that way. That's called electroactuate, one thing. There are, uh, it also has uh, the essence of that electroactive. to it is a story of electrical double layer, how ions are accumulated. I would say modern ionics, or ionic metamaterials, like that one. There are reverse actuators. For instance, you press your electrolyte in the pore, which is an electrode, which is polarized, and then uh, when you get that electrolyte inside, the capacitance of that interface increases because there is a double layer contact of the double layer with the surface increases. And so if you keep it under constant vo voltage, then there will be current going there because capacitance increased. You press it back, if the liquid goes back, then in that case your current will flow in the opposite direction. This is the principle of um, uh, electrical shoe. Yes, I'm showing that uh, for its generation of electrical current from walking. And uh, there is a lot of uh, interesting stuff happening in this area. One of the champions of that is Tom Krupenkin in uh, University of Wisconsin, who is doing, uh, he patented first things like that. We're working on the theory of rather involved systems like that. So it's also kind of metamaterial. You walk, you generate electricity, you charge your mobile phone, and of course it can be, the market for such kind of applications is huge. As Krupenkin told me, it has not yet uh, taken off because there is no understanding because, be, uh, between the uh, shoe companies and the electrical companies. When that understanding will come, so there will be a lot of things done in that way. These are just a couple of more examples, but there are many more. Just one thing, why an array of nanoparticles will reflect light. There will be some transmitted light, of course, but a lot of it will be reflected, so you can see it with your naked eye that there is a mirror. Well, my, I will not give you any kind of mathematical foundation for that, it's all published, but give you a historical analogy. 300 Spartans, when they came and to stand in front of the Persian invasion, they came and standing in the narrow pass of them, they were able to stop that invasion. Can you imagine what would happen if those Spartans were s spread over Sparta? Of course, the Pearson would not notice them and went through that. Something similar is happening here with nanoparticles. When they're close, 
there are resonance phenomena, they're very strong, they excite, excite uh, together and excitation interact with each other and there are interesting resonances there and there is that reflectivity of light. So that's my mili second military analogy. 